This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is 5 o'clock here on your Monday. Thanks for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. Here's what's making headlines on this January the 28th. Cold weather making it awfully difficult for firefighters as they battled multiple house fires overnight. The challenges they faced to cut out two homes engulfed in flames. Residents are looking for answers after dirty water flooded their apartment hallway. RTV6 is working for you and getting results to help those neighbors who say they're tired of living in these terrible conditions. For Martin Luther King Jr. Day, many take the time to honor his legacy with a day of service. What one organization is doing to remember the civil rights leader and how you can get involved. But first, we need to check in with Storm Team 6 meteorologist Todd Clausen. That's right, Todd. There's no question people need to bundle up this morning. You say, grab before you go. I grabbed all the things. <laughs> the gloves, the scarf, the w warm boots. Well, you, what you, else do I need? You were reading my mind. <laughs> we're checking off the heavy coat, the hat, and the gloves here. And you also need the, the sunglasses across the area today. As well have a little bit of sunshine, but it's really all about the cold temperatures this morning. That's the main weather headline. 15 in the city right now, as well as Bloomington. 11 in Lafayette. 12 is the current temperature in Muncie. And you factor in a little bit of wind and it feels like it's in the single digits. Now some of you may see a, a few flakes here and there across the area as well. Uh, but really nothing more than that. And you see the skies are a little clearer to the north compared to southern locations. But there's no weather systems moving through today. Some of these snow showers just drifting in off of Lake Michigan. And that is just about it. So just bundle up. Try to limit your time outdoors. At least initially here this morning. It does get a little bit better as we work our way into the afternoon hours. I know it's still cold, but it's only actually going to be a few degrees below our normal high of 35 later on today. But we have to get through some very cold hours here first initially, and then eventually highs will be right around 30 degrees with a mixture of sun and clouds. Today, the coldest high temperature of the week. More on your extended forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Here is a look in the downtown area, I-65 and I-70 at the north split. You can see traffic here is moving along up to speed on this holiday. We're continuing to keep a close eye on those roads, though, and we'll let you know if there are any issues you need to avoid. The cold weather proved to be a challenge for firefighters battling an early morning house fire. Firefighters say frozen fire hydrants delayed their efforts to put out this house fire near Asbury Street and Cottage Avenue. That's on, the, er, that's on the city's southeast side, that is. When crews arrived around 1.30 this morning, one vacant house was fully engulfed in flames. While firefighters were working to get to a water source, the flames spread to a vacant house next door. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. And two children and two adults are safe after they were able to escape a house fire on the northwest side. This all happened in the 6400 block of Watercrest Way that's near 71st Street and Zinesville Road around 930 last night. When Pike Township firefighters got to the house, they found flames shooting through the roof. Firefighters say two burst hydrants caused a delay in fighting the fire, but they were able to put it out. We still do not know the extent of the damage or what caused the fire. We go now to breaking news from Kansas City, Missouri. That's where police say two people are dead and as many as 15 others are hurt following a shooting at a nightclub. The shots were fired at a line of people waiting to get into the Nine Ultra Lounge, which was holding a celebration party for the Kansas City Chiefs. Our sister station out in Kansas City reported reports that three of the victims are in critical condition. Police say a security guard working at the club shot and killed the suspect. This story is still developing and we will bring you any new details just as soon as we get them on the RTV6 app. This morning we're learning more about a crash that left a Dunkirk, Indiana woman dead and led to multiple arrests. This is a picture of 19 year old Sophie Darlene Robbins. She was killed after losing control of her SUV on County Road 200 South just east of State Road 67 in Madison County around 4.30 Sunday morning. The Madison County Sheriff's Office says three people from another car are now in custody in connection to this crash. That's because investigators say they never reported the wreck. Deputies believe Robin's SUV was either being followed or following another car with four people inside. Investigators say the suspects in that car told them they frequently get together late at night or early in the morning, hang out and drive recklessly to show off for one another. Two adults and a juvenile from Anderson are now in custody 
custody for failure to report a crash resulting in death. One other person remains on the run. Right now, detectives are looking for this man accused of robbing an Arby's on Indy's west side. That robbery happened on Monday night at the Arby's on the 3800 block of Lafayette Road. Police say the man went into the restaurant and forced an employee to open the cash register. He then went to the cash register at the drive through and forced an employee to open it. The IMPD says that he left the restaurant after taking cash from both registers. If you have any information on who this is, please call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. Volunteers are answering a call for help after strong winds damaged a Shelby County animal rescue. The owner of Canine Castaways Rescue in Fountaintown tells RTV6 around 2 o'clock Saturday the wind ripped off the top of their outdoor shelter. This is an area they just built in September for the dogs. All the dogs are safe, but repairs are estimated at about $1,500. Volunteers came out after learning about the news to help walk the dogs and repair the shelter area. They also have a donation link set up on the CCR Facebook page. It's 5.06 on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day. The Kennedy King Memorial Initiative is inviting the community to help in a day of service. In honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., volunteers will help put together 1,000 survival kits to be given to people in need. They'll also be collecting items for those survival kits. Requested items include protein sources like canned tuna, granola bars, bottled water, and warm adult-sized clothes. In addition to the event, a video of Senator Robert F. Kennedy's historic speech on King's death will be played and a guest speaker will also be there. The day of service runs from 10 until 1 today at the Kennedy King Park Center. If you're interested in volunteering, you can find more information on our website, theindychannel.com, and on the RTV6 app. We also have a complete list of other events going on for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Those are posted there as well. Flooded hallways keeping some residents stuck inside their apartments for more than a week. That's what people who live here at this northeast side building have been dealing with for more than a week. But after our story aired, residents at Hubbard Gardens are getting some relief. Our Alyssa Donovan is live this morning. And Alyssa, people we spoke to say they're building has flooded twice in just seven days. That's right. People who live here tell us that they walked out into their hallways to find flooded water that is filled with debris inching closer and closer to their apartment doors. One neighbor tells us it actually did make it into his apartment. Now we walked through the building with several residents, all of them saying the building manager had been contacted, but nothing had been done. The water leaking out of an electrical room nearby their apartments. The building does not have an emergency maintenance number, so neighbors called our TV6. And on Saturday, we called, emailed, and sent a Facebook message to the management company Millennia, based out of Ohio. The house manager showed up on Sunday to assess the damage. She came out, she looked at it, she said it didn't make no sense. She said, more than likely, they may have to bust up that floor. Some, like I said, I'm no plumber, but something's wrong underneath that because this is the second time in a week. A few hours after the house manager arrived, a plumbing and water cleanup company showed up. Now, one resident, one resident rather, tells us that he's grateful that we were able to help clear up some of this flooding. However, he and his girlfriend will be looking for a new place to live. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. It is 508. Indiana's Department of Child Services is looking to fill more than a dozen positions that will hopefully lead to more adoptions. Governor Holcomb announcing during his State of the State address last week that the creation of a new adoption unit within DCS would be a priority. The department's director says the unit will make the process easier for kids and their new families. Under the current setup, the same family case managers that work with the children while they're in DCS system are also helping them to find those forever homes. So this unit will help to relieve a lot of that so that the family case managers in the field of the front line can really focus on safety and permanency for the children that we have open cases for. DCS has 14 open positions for its adoption unit. Those new hires will help with marketing, recruiting families, and also raising awareness about adoption. Indiana University Bloomington will show off a new addition today as part of its bicentennial celebration. IU will unveil the Arthur R. Metz Bicentennial Grand Carillon in the IU Cox Arbitorium. Starting at noon, the Jacobs School of Music will ring one of the largest bells 200 times, marking IU's 200 years. The Metz 
Annette's Carillon will be used on the campus at 17th Street and Jordan Avenue, but the school decided to move it so it would be closer to campus activities. In doing so, IU turned the turned it into a grand carillon, which means it can play extra notes that a standard carillon cannot play. It is also the only grand carillon in Indiana and one of only 18 in the United States. Also a part of IU's Bicentennial and MLK Day, actress Viola Davis will be in on the Bloomington campus today. Davis is known for her starring in the role on the ABC drama, How to Get Away with Murder, and for her role in the film, The Help. She will also deliver a keynote lecture at Simon Scott Assembly Hall at four o'clock this afternoon. Now is the time to eat out at that restaurant you've been dying to try. Devour Indie Winter Fest is kicking off today. For the next two weeks, more than 100 participating restaurants across the city will offer three course value priced menus. Some of those restaurants include St. Elmo's Steakhouse, the Loft Restaurant at Traders Point Creamery, and the Jazz Kitchen. You can find a full list of participating locations on this story on our website, theindiechannel.com. Todd, I just want to go somewhere where they have a hot bowl of soup on a day like today. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's plenty of options on that list for you, but that is an excellent choice, I would say, uh, here throughout the day today because it is a bitter cold start to our morning. The thermometer uh, shaking here across central Indiana as temperatures have dipped down into the teens uh, this morning and will stay in the teens throughout the entire duration of your morning uh, drive. So if you do have to head to work here this morning, temperatures are going to be hovering right around 15 degrees for the duration of the drive into work with skies that are partly to mostly cloudy across the area. There could be a few flurries mixed in here and there, but nothing more than that. Of course, just be a little careful outside. There's some snow that fell yesterday and it's blown to the side of the road. So the road's not an issue, but that snow on some sidewalks covering up a little bit of ice still. Uh, so there could be a few slick spots uh, as you walk out and about, but the roads were in good shape. Highs today eventually get up to right around 30 degrees, but it's going to be a slow process getting there. But we do have some warmer days in our future. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Police searching for a gunman who shot seven people inside of a Texas club. Coming up, what authorities believe led to that deadly shooting. And more extreme weather plagues Australia amid the deadly bushfires. Still ahead, the dust and hailstorms now hitting the country. We'll be right back. Days from 4.30 to 7. Right now, police are looking for a suspect after a deadly shooting inside a Texas club overnight. Authorities say seven people were shot inside the Ventura Bar in San Antonio, killing two. A 21-year-old man was found dead inside the bar, and another person died on the way to the hospital. Police say there was some kind of concert going on at the club when they believe an argument broke out, leading to that shooting. There was an altercation between a group or individuals one person at least pulled out a gun, started shooting. Don't know if, that, if it was at a specific individual or just shooting indiscriminately. Five others were taken to the hospital. Police have not identified any suspects in the investigation. Time now is 516 to the Department of Homeland Security has renewed an advisory over Iran. The bulletin sent from the National Terrorism Advisory System warns of cyber attacks and terrorism, but no specific threats were detailed. The advisory is still concerned about the Iran's ability to carry out various attacks in the U.S. The bulletin renews an initial version issued earlier this month after the U.S. airstrike that killed a top Iranian gen general. The updated advisory expires March 18th. The FBI says it's now working with police regarding threats of violence ahead of today's gun rights rally in Virginia. Thousands of people are expected to show up at the state capitol in Richmond. The FBI has already arrested a number of suspected neo-Nazis around the country out of concerns they were planning a violent act. State police say many of the threats were received on its social media. In response, the governor has also issued a state of emergency and banned firearms and weapons on state capital grounds. Extreme weather sweeping across Australia as the country continues to battle deadly bushfires. Hailstones the size of golf balls pelted the city of Melbourne where the Australian tennis tournament just got underway. A storm comes less than 24 hours after a massive dust storm swept through South New Wales. The dust cloud blanketed entire towns and were so thick in some areas it blocked the sun. Pretty wild weather out that way back here 
Todd, it is finally feeling like the January we're used to in <laughs> Indiana. Right, and coming up in a few minutes, I'm going to show you a uh, map here about the high temperatures throughout the entire month. And there's a lot more above normal than below normal, but yeah, we've definitely flipped the script. So you think it's cold this morning? The record low for today is actually minus 22 degrees. So thankfully, we are not close to that number, but you are walking out the door to temperatures in the teens across the area. 15 degrees, that is the current temperature at the airport in Indianapolis, west northwest wind at nine miles per hour. So there is still a bit of a breeze. It's kind of subsided just a little bit uh, throughout the overnight hours, but we're still factoring in wind chills that are in the single digits. 14 right now in Greencastle, 10 in Peru as well as Tipton. It's 12 as you make your way over into the Richmond area. Wind chill values in the single digits. Again, down one in Peru feels like three in Indianapolis. So just try to limit your time outdoors if possible here throughout the morning hours. A lot of schools off, so that's good news for the kids at least. Some of you have to head to work. Uh, the temperatures will start to moderate fairly quickly though once we uh, get the sun up here a little after eight o'clock. Seven in Peoria, minus three right now in Des Moines with a little more of a snowpack on the ground, but this chill goes all the way down into Charlotte right now where they're dealing with temperatures below freezing throughout the day today. We'll see our temperatures warm to about 25 degrees by the noon hour, and then we should get up to 29 for your high temperature. The average high is 35, so yeah, we're still a little bit below normal, uh, but 29 is a lot better than where we were yesterday afternoon when the temperatures leveled off in the teens. Don't be shocked if you see a flurry or two this morning, but those should continue to diminish throughout the course of the day as the winds kind of slacken off and change direction a little bit. And then this evening, if you have plans, again, it's no big issue. Temperatures do not drop off tonight as quickly as they have. We'll be in the 20s, and then tomorrow morning you're waking up to a temperature probably right around 18, 19 degrees, so it's still obviously very cold, but tomorrow with sunshine, we get back up to right around a 31 to 32 degrees. And as you look at your seven day planning forecast, temperatures will moderate a little bit each and every day this week. And once we get to the end of the week, we're back into the mid 40s. So we're above normal. Thursday, lots of clouds. Friday into Saturday, there's going to be a storm system in and around the area. Depending on the track, we'll see a little bit of rain and or snow. But with temperatures in the 40s in the afternoon hours, it's probably only rain. The concern would be during the overnight hours where it's a little bit colder. We could see some minor accumulation, but we have plenty of time to get to those days and fine tune the forecast. As for today, just bundle up with the cold temperatures in place, Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. It is 520 and here's a live look outside right now. I-465 and Sam Jones Expressway over on the west side. You can see traffic is moving along just fine, northbound and southbound. No delays to slow you down. So let's take a turn to the northeast side, I-465 and I-69. A view from our in-dot traffic camera in that area on the northeast side. No crashes to slow you down on this Monday and this holiday. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated. American folk singer David Olney died this weekend in the middle of a performance. Olney was playing on stage at the 30A Songwriters Festival in Florida when he paused and said he was sorry and shut his eyes. Witnesses say he appeared to be peaceful in his passing and never dropped his guitar or fell off the stool. Olney's songs have been recorded by artists including Linda Ronstadt and Steve Young. He survived by his wife and two children. He was 71 years old. SpaceX just finished its last big test before it plans to launch astronauts this year. The Dragon Crew capsule launched in Cape Canaveral yesterday, mimicking an emergency escape. No one was on board except no one was on board the capsule except for two mannequins which parachuted safely into the Atlantic Ocean. Astronauts could launch from the next Dragon capsule as early as April. NASA astronauts have not launched from the U.S. since 2011. The teams competing for Super Bowl 54 have been decided. The Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers are headed to Miami. The Chiefs took on the Tennessee Titans for the AFC Championship. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes threw for three touchdowns and ran for another one, leading the Chiefs to a 35-24 victory. This will be the Chiefs' first Super Bowl since 1970. And in the NFC, the San Francisco 49ers held on to win against the Green Bay Packers with a final score of 37 to 20. Former Purdue Boilermaker was key in the game for the Niners. Running back Raheem Mostert scored four touchdowns and rushed for more than 200 yards. The Super Bowl matchup between the Chiefs and 49ers is set for February 2nd. A woman woke up to a cold surprise this weekend after the break. How her car got filled with so much snow. We'll be right back. Hands. Thanks, Joe Keefe. I got my hands back. 
Welcome back, 525 on your Monday. Here's a live look at I-70 and Royal Street, Eastern Avenue on the Near East side. Traffic here is moving along smoothly. No issues to slow down your commute. A woman in Canada got quite a surprise when she woke up Saturday morning. When she opened up her car, there was snow piled up inside. So much snow, in fact, she couldn't drive the car. So how did this happen? Her son says that she rolled the window down Friday so she could see better to get into her driveway and she forgot to put it back up. But then overnight more snow fell, <laughs> flooding her car with snow. I would be so mad at myself. Oh my gosh, I don't what know a what mess. I do. Oh wow, how do you even dry that out? Yeah, she's like, Ugh. oh wow. All right. Well, thankfully, we have no major <laughs> snowfall in our forecast. No, you know, there's a few flakes out there this morning. Don't be surprised if you see them falling from the sky. And there's a little bit of a light, fluffy coating on the side of the roadways that just basically blows around because it's so cold out. And that shouldn't cause you any issues either. So throughout the day today, just bundle up this morning. Temperatures will be in the teens with partly to mostly cloudy skies. Eventually, later on this afternoon, temperatures do climb up to right around 30 degrees in most locations. You should get to 30 degrees in Bloomington as well as Columbus and then northern locations right around 28 degrees with that mixture of sun and clouds. So just really, really bundle up this morning. They get some relief not only this afternoon, but in the days ahead. More on your seven day planning forecast coming up in the next half hour. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today at 10 on RTV6. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Not a day off. That's right, we're working for you this morning with how you can participate in the 25th annual day of service, honoring the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Plus, residents looking for answers after dirty water flooded their apartment hallway. They're getting a little relief this morning. And our Alyssa Donovan is live with how an RTV6 investigation helped those residents get some answers. But first, here on your Monday morning, we want to check in on the frigid forecast. That's right, Todd Clausen is standing by with just how cold it is outside right now and what you need to know on this Monday. Hey, Todd. Yeah, good morning, ladies. Good morning, everybody. Temperatures in the teens. Anywhere you go this morning, need to bundle up. So obviously the jacket is checked off this morning. You don't have to worry about any precipitation. Uh, sunglasses, you'll need those at times throughout the day today. In your outdoor workout, I'd advise you to wait till later compared to this morning if it includes being outdoors uh, to allow these temperatures to start to moderate just a little bit. We're at 15 in the city, 11 in Lafayette, 15 in Bloomington, Peru, you're down to 10. We'll go into some hometowns here in northern locations. Logansport, you're at 10 degrees as well. Marion and Anderson sitting at 11. You factor in the wind. Feels like it's in the single digits anywhere you go this morning across the area. Now, you saw some snowflakes yesterday and it put down a little coating on the side of the roadways on the roadways and it just kind of blows around uh, with the ground temperature so cold. Don't be shocked if you still see a flurry this morning or two, uh, but nothing of consequence. That is the good news as any snow shower activity will continue to diminish and today really it's just all about the temperature skies will be mostly cloudy initially and then partly cloudy at times throughout the day today 25 by the noon hour on our way up to a high temperature today lauren of 29. hey todd thanks here's a look right now from our in-dot traffic camera at your commute on the south side the interchange here at i-65 and i-465 traveling up to speed no delays so let's take a turn up to the northeast side this morning i-465 near binford boulevard traffic is moving along smoothly on this holiday we'll continue to keep you updated if there are any issues the cold weather proved to be a challenge for firefighters battling an early morning house fire. Firefighters say frozen fire hydrants delayed their efforts to put out this house fire near Asbury Street and College Cottage Avenue. It's on the city's southeast side. When crews arrived around 1.30 this morning, one vacant house was fully engulfed in flames while firefighters were working to get a water source. The flames then spread to a vacant house next door. The cause of the fire continues to remain under investigation. People People who live on the northeast side apartment complex have been dealing with flooded hallways for more than a week now. And to add to their frustrations, they'd been unable to get anyone to come out to fix the problem. That is until our story aired. Our Alyssa Donovan is joining us live this morning. And Alyssa, residents reached out to RTV6 about this problem. 
That's right, and we came out here to the Hubbard Gardens apartment complex here on the northeast side on Saturday, and they showed us all of the problems they were talking about. We reached out to the apartment complex management team, and by Sunday, there was someone here cleaning up the mess. But before that happened, residents showed us all of this. They had laid down cardboard boxes themselves, newspapers and blankets to soak up flood water coming from the hallway, the water reaching up into apartment doors. Residents tell us the flooding was coming from an electrical room down the hall, and this isn't the first time it's happened. The biggest concern, no one has fixed the problem. And when the leak happens over the weekend, there's no emergency maintenance number to call. One man says the flooding causes his girlfriend to be housebound because the ramp she needs to use is not accessible. Well, she's like in a wheelchair. If I have to get her out towards the ramp, where the door is to the back, <laughs> you see what's down there. How am I supposed to do that? It's, it's, it makes no sense people living like this. Now, a plumbing and cleanup crew arrived on Sunday. However, neighbors tell us the smell left by the flooding is still very much a problem. And one neighbor tells us that when the house manager showed up, she told him this could be a deeper problem that will require some more maintenance and repairs. Of course, we will check on that as we continue to follow this story. For now, residents say they're just happy that these floodwaters are cleaned up. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. It is 534 in other news this morning. Metro Police are investigating multiple weekend shootings. First, two people were injured in two separate shootings early Sunday morning. Officers were called out to the 500 block of North Gladstone Avenue near East Michigan Street and North Sherman Drive on the east side around 115. When officers arrived, they found a person suffering from an apparent gunshot wound who was awake and breathing. And then around 2.30 a.m., IMPD found a person shot near West 16th Street and North Tibbs Avenue on the west side. That victim is in stable condition, according to police. Again, these are two separate unrelated shootings. Also, over on the west side, police say that a teen was injured in a shooting at a home on Ashway Drive near 38th Street and High School Road. This all happened just before 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon. The teen was taken to the hospital, and we are told he is in good condition. Finally, last night, Metro Police say officers found a person shot in the 4800 block of West Beecher Street that's near Interstate 7 and South Lyndhurst Drive. The victim in that case was taken to the hospital in serious condition. As always, if you have any information that might help police solve any of these cases, please call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. Your call is anonymous and you could be eligible for a cash reward. Covering the State House this morning, Indiana lawmakers are out of session today, but we are keeping track of some of the proposed laws that are being discussed this week and could impact your life. First, a bill filed in the Indiana House of Representatives would get rid of the so-called pink tax. That's a term for the sales tax applied to feminine hygiene products like pads and tampons. Access to those products is an issue we've shared with you several times over the last few months. Local groups are working to make sure girls and women have the feminine hygiene products they need, but advocates say things need to go a step further, removing unnecessary barriers to medically necessary products. There's also a bill being discussed that would get rid of the sales tax on diapers. Another bill being closely watched, one that would allow the state to provide driving cards and learner's permits to Indiana residents who have who live in the country illegally. Right now, you need proof of legal status to get an Indiana driver's license. Supporters say driving cards would make the roads safer for all Hoosiers. And for the third year in a row, a representative from Goshen has introduced a bill that would ban abortion in Indiana. Abortion is legal at the federal level, but, the, but House Bill 1089 would make it illegal here. It also includes a change in the definition of a human being so that under state law, life begins at conception rather than birth. You can keep track of all these bills and others on the RTV6 app. Time right now is 537. Today marks the 25th anniversary of the day of service honoring civil rights icon Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Congress passed the King Holiday and Service Act in 1994, marking the day as a national day of service. It's the only federal holiday that encourages all Americans to work together to improve their communities through acts of service, anti-violence campaigns, and interracial dis discussions. In addition to volunteering, several organizations across the city are offering special programming in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. 
The Children's Museum of Indianapolis is offering free admission. There will be special performances and activities honoring Dr. King's life and the impact of the civil rights movement. The museum will be open from 10 in the morning until 5 in the evening. The Indianapolis Zoo will also have free admission today for anyone who brings a non-perishable food item. That food will go to Gleaner's Food Bank. The zoo will be open from 9 a.m. until 4 this afternoon. We've got a complete list of all the events going on across central Indiana today. That information is up right now on the IndyChannel.com and on the RTV6 app. And if you're looking for something to do with the kids today, the Harlem Globetrotters are back in town. The Globetrotters make a trip to Bankers Life Fieldhouse every Martin Luther King Jr. Day weekend. The first game was last night, and of course, they beat the Washington Generals. The Harlem Globetrotters are back in action at Bankers live field house today at 2 p.m. Time now for a check of our forecast and Todd you're going to break down what we've been experiencing this past month you right? Know, January just got off to such a good start in fact we had 16 days in a row where our high temperature was above normal. Then we had that storm system that brought the cold temperatures in on Friday, 32 degrees, so that was below normal. And then yesterday's high temperature only got up to 21, and that was right after midnight. Much of the day yesterday, we spent with temperatures that were in the teens. So we've kind of flipped the switch here. We'll have a few more days below normal, and then it does look like our temperatures start to moderate by the time we get to the middle of the week. But as we go throughout the day today, 15 degrees, very cold. This afternoon for your commute, 29 degrees with a mixture of sun and clouds. We get closer to the freezing mark, but still a very chilly day for us. More on your extended forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Prince Harry broke in his silence about his split from Buckingham Palace. Up next here, his emotional reaction to the Queen's decision to strip him and Meghan of their royal titles. And in an unusually highly, and in a highly unusual step, that is, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention will be screening past Passengers at three airports for symptoms of a mysterious new virus. We'll have all the details on the outbreak coming up. It's 540. We'll be right back. Gens XR. Welcome back. Time right now is 543 and we're keeping a close eye on traffic. This is a live look at I-70 and I-65 at the North Split where traffic is moving along just fine this morning. We'll continue to let you know if there are anything you need to, any crashes or delays you need to avoid that is on your roads. Tragedy in Hawaii this morning following the shooting deaths of two police officers. The incident unfolding early Sunday morning in Honolulu and now 24 hours later, the search for the suspect continues. Authorities say the officers were responding to a call from a woman who had been stabbed. Shortly after the officers arrived, they were fired, shots were fired and the officers were struck. Police identified the suspect as Jerry Hanel. The authorities say that he set fire to a house and then the flames spread to nearby homes. Now Hanel and two unidentified females are unaccounted for. There's no word on where they might be, but authorities say they will continue searching until Hanel is brought to justice. President Trump's impeachment trial is set to begin in the Senate tomorrow. He's assembled a team of lawyers, including Ken Starr, the lawyer best known for heading an investigation of the members of the Clinton administration during his impeachment. The team has filed its first formal response ahead of tomorrow's trial, calling the House impeachment effort a, quote, poisonous partisanship and lawless process. Still up in the air, the issue of witnesses. Senate Republicans say they're planning to postpone addressing the issue until after House managers present their case and the president responds. The trial is expected to start Tuesday at one. In Iran, officials are backtracking. They're now saying that authorities there will examine the black boxes of the Ukrainian Airlines flight that was shot down earlier this month. The Boeing 737 went down after Iran carried out the missile attack on Iraqi base housing U.S. troops. All 176 people on board that flight were killed. Saturday, the Iranian government said it would send the flight recorders to Ukraine where investigators from France, Canada, and the U.S. would assist in that inspection. But on Sunday, Iranian officials said that they will investigate the black boxes themselves and send them off if needed. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, Delta is facing some serious backlash after one of their flights dumped jet fuel over several schools. Dozens of kids and teachers were doused with the liquid, several being sent to the hospital. Now, a lawsuit has been filed against the airline claiming the pilot, quote, made the conscious decision to dump massive amounts of toxic jet fuel on 
come to the victims, end quote. Delso says the fuel dump was normal procedure required to reach a safe landing weight. The FAA is still investigating. It is 545 on your Monday and Prince Harry has broken his silence regarding his split from Buckingham Palace. Speaking publicly for the first time last night, Harry expressed, quote, great sadness over the Queen's decision to strip him and his wife, Meghan Markle, of their royal titles. Earlier this month, the couple announced plans to step back from their roles as senior members of the royal family, splitting their time between North America and England. The couple said they hope to become financially independent while still supporting the Queen. But Saturday, the palace announced that the couple would no longer use the Royal Highness titles and no longer represent the Queen. Our hope was to continue serving the Queen, the Commonwealth and my military associations, but without public funding. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. I will always have the utmost respect for my grandmother, my commander in chief, and I'm incredibly grateful to her and the rest of my family for the support they have shown Meghan and I over the last few months. Harry and Meghan will still be the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. They also agreed to repay the millions they were given to renovate their home in Windsor. Despite the split, the Queen says the couple and their son Archie will always be much loved members of the royal family. Right now, we want to get a check of our forecast with Todd Clausen. If you're heading out the door, bundle up. Yeah, you definitely have to, Lauren, this morning as temperatures continue to fall in many locations. Now down to 10 degrees in both Tipton as well as Peru. 15 in Bloomington, a couple 12s off to the east for your temperature in Muncie as well as Richmond, Bloomington sitting at 15 degrees. You factor in the wind and it feels like it's in the single digits in many locations. Three is the real field temperature in Indy. One is what it feels like in Peru. So hats, gloves, heavy coat, all required on this Monday morning. If you don't have to go to work uh, here this morning and the kids don't have to go to school, just stay inside for a few hours here and let these temperatures start to warm up. And they'll do that throughout the course of the day. There's a few flurries that'll be possible this morning, but we're not looking at anything more than and that, that's the good news. And as the winds start to die down and change direction a little bit, the chance of seeing those flurries will continue to diminish pretty quickly throughout the course of the morning hours. So temperatures today will be slow to warm. We'll still be in the teens through much of the afternoon hour or morning hours rather than once we get into the afternoon hours, we're looking at temperatures that should get into the mid to upper 20s, still below normal. We should be at 35 this time of year. Uh, but with some sunshine and fairly light winds, it'll feel at least better than yesterday. Yesterday, when we had the clouds, the windy conditions and temperatures only in the teens. By the time we go into the midnight hour, temperatures are back down into the mid 20s. So we don't fall off as quickly as we did uh, the past morning or two across the area. And then by the time you wake up tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, we're looking at temperatures that will be sitting in the teens. So tomorrow we start the progress uh, in the right direction for warmer temperatures. It's still cold, but it's quiet to start off your day tomorrow. And then as we get into your noon hour, your temperatures up to 27 degrees with mostly sunny skies. And then eventually you'll see your high temperature tomorrow get to 33 degrees. And that puts us above freezing. Going forward in the forecast, we will continue to see our temperatures moderate as we work our way throughout the remainder of the work week. Wednesday, 39 degrees. That gets us back above normal with a mixture of sun and clouds. Thursday, we're looking at 44 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. And then things start to get interesting as we get towards the end of the week. And it's really Friday and Saturday. This would be the third Saturday in a row with precipitation. I think it may start off as a little bit of a rain a snow mixture with temperatures below freezing. But by the time we get to Friday afternoon with temperatures that will be in the low 40s, probably not going to be a wintry concern. It could potentially be a wet day for us again on Friday at 42. And the same for Saturday as the temperatures get close to freezing early Saturday morning. May mix in a little bit of wintry precipitation but up to 43 for the high Saturday afternoon. So it's definitely a storm we'll watch depending on uh, this track, but I think we're definitely probably at this point seeing more rain, Lauren, than we will potentially snow as we get into the weekend. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Right now on your roads, it is smooth sailing on this Monday and a holiday. This is a look right now at I-465 at US 31 Meridian Street up on the north side. Traffic here is pretty quiet, no crashes or delays. The question of whether employers can refuse to help pay for birth control is heading to the Supreme Court. Justices agreed Friday to hear two appeals challenging the so-called contraceptive mandate. The regulation requires employers to include contraception coverage in their health insurance plans free of cost. Churches are exempt from the mandate, but the Trump administration expanded that exemption to 
any employer with a religious or moral objection. Lower courts later blocked that expanded exemption. The Supreme Court will hear the case in April with a decision by late June. Three U.S. airports are screening passengers for symptoms of a deadly new virus. The coronavirus has been linked to a pneumonia outbreak in Asia. South Korea just confirmed its first case of the virus, which is similar to SARS, a respiratory virus that can be spread through the air. Meanwhile, Chinese officials have confirmed 139 new cases of pneumonia linked to the virus and say a third person has died from it. Passengers arriving from China at JFK in New York, SFO in San Francisco, and LAX in Los Angeles will all be screened. January is peak travel season from China to the United States, and that's because of the Chinese Lunar New Year. The Oscars may be Hollywood's biggest night, but the most meaningful night for many actors may be the Screen Actors Guild Awards, where the only people voting are their peers. Coming up, we'll have a look at the night's big winners. We'll be right back. Donate to Goodwill. <laughs> Welcome back. Time right now is 554 on your Monday. And take a look here at this view on the south side, I-465, US 31, the East Street exit. We have some snow flurries looking across the interstate there, so you want to use constant. If this is part of your commute, watch for any slick spots on the road. As we know, it is cold out there this morning. A singer, a joker, a lawyer, and a stuntman. The actors portraying those roles on the big screen all walked away with SAG Awards last night. Renee Zellweger took home the award for Best Female Actor in a Leading Role. And not surprisingly, Joaquin Phoenix snagged the Best Male Actor Award for his role in the movie Joker. Brad Pitt won in supporting category for his work in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The actor joking that he was going to add his new honor to his Tinder profile. And history was made with the cast of South Korean movie Parasite becoming the first cast of a foreign language which film to win the ensemble prize. Next up for the award season is the Oscars. That will be held on February 9th, right here on RTV6. Okay, so we just saw that camera of some snow flurries out there. We wanna check in with Todd right now. Yeah, and essentially, Lauren, they're just there on the south side of Indianapolis. You can see them on Storm Team 6 radar right here. There's not much out there. And you'll see these flakes when the ground's so cold, they're just gonna blow along, along the ground. Really should not cause too many issues on the roadways. Look at these temperatures though, 15 in Indy, 12 right now, in Muncie, Bloomington 16, you factor in the wind. Everybody feels like they're in the single digits this morning. So definitely bundle up. It's a bitter cold morning for us. Overall today, we're looking at partly cloudy skies, but your high temperature with it only getting a 28 obviously stays below freezing. As far as any of those snow showers, they should start to diminish as the morning wears on, setting us up for just a cold but quiet afternoon. The time now, it's 556. Stay with Good Morning Indiana. We'll be back here in just a few minutes with your latest weather, traffic, and news headlines.